channel. Today I am very much excited and happy since I have covered 4000 subscribers and it is only because of each and every one of you. So thankful for each and every one of you for the whole hearted support you have given to my channel. And if you are happy, please don't forget to share among your friends, colleagues and the students who are pursuing this course. I have included all the topics of radiography along with anatomy. So it will be helpful for all of you to understand since I have given question and answers along with a brief explanation too. And if you have any suggestions, you may feel free to mail to my mail address which is given in my slide. So once again, thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome to the new session of exam preparation for radiography. In today's session, I have included questions and answers from the topics of patient care, radiation protection, radiation physics along with radiography contrast and positioning terminology. So let us see the questions for today's session. Question number 11. Administration of contrast medium for radiographic demonstration of the spinal canal is performed by which of the following parental roots? Options are option A subcutaneous, option B intravenous, option C intramuscular and option D intrathecal. The answer is option D intrathecal. The five parental roots require different needle placement. Under the skin means subcutaneous, through the skin into the muscle means intramuscular, between the layers of the skin means intradermal, into the vein intravenous and into the subarachnoid space is known as intrathecal. Number 12. In classifying IV contrast, IV means intravenous contrast agent, the total number of dissolved particles in solution per kilogram of water defines option A osmolality, option B toxicity, option C viscosity and option D miscibility. The answer is option A osmolality. Toxicity defines how harmful a contrast agent is. Non-ionic LOCA means low or smaller contrast medium causes less tissue toxicity than ionic contrast medium that means HOCM high or smaller contrast medium. Viscosity defines the thickness or concentration of the contrast agent. Miscibility of the contrast agent refers to its ability to mix with the body fluid such as blood. So, the total number of dissolved particles in solution per kilogram of water defines osmolality. Number 13. Anaphylactic shock manifests early symptoms that include, I will be reading or giving three criteria. First one is dysphagia means difficulty in swallowing. Second one is itching of palms and soles. Third one is constriction of the throat. Again, I will give you the option. Option A is 1 only. Option B is 2 only. Option C is 2 and 3 only. And option D is 1, 2 and 3. The answer is option D, 1, 2 and 3. Adverse reaction to the IV iodinated contrast medium are not uncommon. Although the risk of a life threatening situation is relatively low. Then also the radiographers must be alert to recognize the situation and to deal with it by maintaining the patient's airway, summon the situation to the radiologist and call cord blue. So anaphylactic shock will be having the above three symptoms means dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing, itching of the palms and soles as well as constrictions of the throat. Question number, question number 14. All the statements regarding an exact PA projection of the skull are true except Option A. The orbitomiant line is perpendicular to the IR. IR means image receptor. Option B. The pectoral pyramid fills the orbit. 
Option C. The mid-surjected plane MSP is parallel to the image receptor. And option D. The central ray is perpendicular to the image receptor and exits at the nasium. The answer is C. The mid-surjected plane MSP is parallel to the image receptor. In an exact PA projection of the skull, the MSP that means the mid surjected plane must be perpendicular to the image receptor or the skull will be rotated and the right and left symmetry will be lost. Since if the mid surjected plane is not perpendicular to the image receptor, the skull will be seen rotated and the symmetry will be lost. Question number 15. Which of the following structures are located in the right upper quadrant R, U, Q? I will be giving the criteria. The first one is hepatic flexure, second one is gourd bladder, third one is the ileocecal valve. Options are option A1 only, option B1 and 2 only, option C2 and 3 only and option D is 1, 2 and 3. Here the answer is option B1 and 2 only. So, from the option 1 and 2 only means the hepatic flexion and gallbladder is coming under right upper quadrant. Here, let's see the explanation. The gallbladder is located on the posterior surface of the liver in the right upper quadrant. The hepatic flexure means right colic flexure, so called because of its close proximity to the liver, is also in the right upper quadrant. The cecum located in the right lower quadrant is continuous with the terminal ileum forming the ileocecal valve. So, the ileocecal valve is not coming under right upper quadrant. Question number 16. The guidelines for the use of protective shielding state that gonad shielding should be used. I will be reading the three criteria. The first one is if the patient has reasonable reproductive potential. The second one is when the gonad are within 5 cm of the collimated field. The third one is when tight collimation is not possible. The option is option A 1 only, option B 1 and 2 only, option C 1 and 3 only and option D is 1, 2 and 3 only. The answer is option B 1 and 2 only. Gonad shielding should be used when the patient is of reproductive age or younger or when the gonads are in or near the collimated field. So the answer, the guidelines for a protective shielding state will be coming under the 1 and 2 criteria means if the patient have a reasonable reproductive potential or when the gonads are within the 5 cm of the collimated field. Question number 17. What pixel size has a 512 into 512 matrix with a 20 cm field of view? FOV means field of view. Option A 0.07 mm per pixel. Option B 0.39 mm per pixel. Option C is 0.04 mm per pixel and option D is 4.5. 0 mm per pixel or 4 mm per pixel? The answer is B, 0 0.39 mm per pixel. Let us see the calculation. In digital imaging, the pixel size is determined by dividing the field of view FOV by the matrix. So, here in this case, the FOV is 20 cm. Since the answer is in mm, mm per pixel, so we have to convert this 20 centimeter into mm, so it will become 200 mm. Then divided by 512, 512 into 512 is the matrix size, so the field of view in mm is divided by the matrix, so we get the answer as 0.39 mm per pixel. Question number 18. In a duration of 0.05 second was selected for a particular exposure, 
what milli ampere would be necessary to produce 30 ma's option a 900 option b 600 option c 500 and option d is 300 the answer is b 600 let us see the formula and the calculation the formula for MA into S is equal to MAS. From the above equation, we have to find out the MA. So, we will be giving MA as X into S means the exposure time. So, it is given from the equation as 0 0.05 and the MAS is also given in the equation as 30 MAS. From this, we can calculate X and we get the answer as 600. MA. Question number 19. The component of a CR image plate. CR means computed radiography that records the radiographic image is option A emulsion, option B helium neon laser, option C photostimulable phosphor and option D is scanner reader. The answer is C photostimulable phosphor. CR computer radiography imaging plate is of photostimulable phosphor. This photostimulable phosphor with its layer of europium activated barium fluorohalide is exposed and latent image is formed. Emulsion layer was used in conventional radiography to record an image. Question number 20. The X-ray photon energy is inversely related to I will be giving the three criteria. First one is photon wavelength. Second one is applied milliampere MA. Third one is applied kilo voltage KV. The options are option A 1 only, option B 1 and 2 only, option C is 1 and 3 only and option D is 1, 2 and 3. The answer is A 1 only. When the kilo voltage is increased, more high energy photons are produced and the overall energy of the primary beam is increased. This photon energy is inversely related to the wavelength. That is when the photon energy increases, wavelength decreases. So the penetrating power is increased. And increased in the milliampere will increase the number of photons produced at the target. But it is unrelated to their energy. So, the X-ray photon energy is inversely related to the photon wavelength and it is not dependent on milliampere as well as kilo voltage that is MA and KV. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Hope you all understood all the question and answers discussed for today's session. If you have any suggestions, you may mail to my mail address pavadi 1609 at gmail.com. Stay tuned for the next session and once again thank you so much.